Um, okay, so we're very excited to welcome our first ever celebrity interview guest today. You may know him as the front man of Hunters and Collectors from Meredith Music Festival in 2017 or from various performances at the Grand Final over the years. Um, he also released an album last year, Slow Dawn. Please welcome Australian rock icon and my dad, Mark Seymour. Thank Ooh. you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, thank you for thank being, you for being here, here, Mark. It's a big deal for um, us and our listeners. We've never done an interview before. No, it could go horribly <laughs> wrong. Right. Yeah. Okay. You're okay. our first, inter- not only are you our first interview guest, you're our first celebrity guest. Yeah. So it's very, it'll be very excited for the fans out there. Who I'm hitting all the, the buttons. It's, yeah. it's huge. <laughs> <laughs> I should have programmed some like applause into the into their thing. <laughs> Give it some. Oh, we also have a dog here who's now climbing up onto Dad's lap. If you're watching, you might see that. So oh, we should mention quickly before we start uh, this interview with Mark. We're going to have the full unedited interview um, <laughs> to surprise you, Mark. The full unedited interview uh, on YouTube because we might have to shorten it for the actual pod to fit it in the pod timing. But if there's, you know extra bits and pieces we'll put it on youtube so yeah there'll be an extended cut right as they say in the industry Uh, yes yeah uh okay so first question to ask you dad uh this year the singer the weekend publicly boycotted the grammys so the grammys was on monday night or sunday night sunday night who who did the weekend really doesn't matter if you don't know okay it's the act in principle yes he's he's, yeah and there's been sort of yeah, named. there's been artists quite publicly sort of coming out, den- not really denouncing the Grammys, but criticising the Grammys because they get it wrong. Either they're not inclusive enough or they don't mm. nominate the mm. right people. Like there's generally, and not only for the Grammys, but acting awards shows too. There's sort of been a, a growing level of um, annoyance among musicians and actors and everything over the way the way in which awards shows work. So. We wanted to start by asking you, what are your thoughts on awards shows in music and do you think they still play a valuable role in the music industry? Oh, that's a huge question. Uh, personally, I I have very little to do with the Arias, or in our equivalent is the Arias. Yeah. I have very little to do with the Arias. I haven't had for many years. Um, there, there's a, you know, a variety of reasons for that, but um, it, 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 it's been a long-standing um, background conversation that many musicians I know over the years have had about whether or not the Arias represent what an Australian cultural environment mm. really is like right. and, you know, whether it's relevant or not. But, you know, it's sort of a conversation that doesn't really have an end. You yeah. Know, it just go, it'll just go on forever, mm. you know. And But I, I think, you know, I suppose, you know, awards nights are kind of like a – a meeting place for people who know each other and, you know, they they have a common, they have a lot of, you know, music in common and they just get together and have a bit of a, bit of a knees up and, and then it's all over for another year. And it, and it serves as a means of promoting, promoting product really. Yeah. Mm. But I don't really look at it beyond as having any much, much more significance than that. But the thing is in the American context, it's really different. I mean, there's, like there's there's this whole cultural vortex in the United States is really actually very relevant and credible for the rest of the Western world. Mm. Yeah, and so any kind of controversy like that is has has some intrinsic worth in my view because it just creates mm. dialogue. Yeah, know? yeah. Um, well, I guess a lot of what pe- people are annoyed about is the way in which you know I, I'm not sure about the Grammys. I think usually there's like a small group of people from the industry quote unquote who make these decisions about who's nominated mm. yeah like the academy or exactly I think the grammys you know, is like the recording academy so right. i think it is the same so i guess th- often the criticism is that they don't mean anything or that they're you know it's not an accurate representation of quality music i mean do you have any thoughts on that or oh <laughs> <laughs> well i, I mean You're even, like, well, i haven't been nominated put, for some arias <laughs> you can put the awards <laughs> aside just as, a, as an institution for one moment and just consider it how you know Music, p- the promotion of commercial music actually works in a, mm. on, on a very grassroots level. I mean, it's not, it isn't intrinsically related to quality. It's about, yeah. mm-hmm. it's about selling product, uh-huh. you know, so, and, it, and the advertising revenue that's attached to that. So there's a, there's a, the, that's your starting point just to begin with. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. I mean, so I just look at it really in raw terms like that. And, and, and as time goes by, the cream rises to the top. I mean, it's, okay, it's yeah. undeniable. Like, I mean, there are great artists that, that, that have received Grammys who are undeniably good yeah. over the totally. years. So, 
I well, mean, it's, it's, it's a spectrum, obviously, but, and as I said before, I mean, uh, there's an area, there's a grey area of dialogue in amongst it all where you can question the, the credibility of how the industry, well, in Australia, how the music industry regards itself and, you know, who's doing valuable work, what, what it actually, what, how much relevance it's got and you'll never end the conversation. It's just going to mm, go on forever. Yeah. And it's worth having. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not worth having, but. Yeah. I think yeah. Um, c- kind of continuing on from the point of sort of artistry and, and the music industry and commercialism and everything, and that whole umbrella of the fact that the industry is not just artistic, but is commercially driven as well. Do you find when you're going, you know, to make an album or you set out to write songs or whatever, you're, you're influenced by sort of, the culture at large, like what's going on around you or do you find yourself going, I, I want to write a hit? Like is there, what's the motivation behind that? Does it come from cultural, personal or whatever? Uh, I tend to go, my starting point is always mm. um, how much wh- how much of my actual activity as an artist do I have control over? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. What are my boundaries? I mean, what, what's actually, what do I have meaningful agency? Where, where does my meaningful agency end? And mm. so there are levels of activity and dialogue I have with people that don't have any bearing on songwriting, mm. but I've got to have those conversations, right, with people yeah. who aren't directly related to me in that mm-hmm. artistic way. And mm. they, what I, they're, they're, there's some lovely people out there who help me along the way. Uh, and they, you know, I'm quite, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm cynical, but I, I I definitely have a very pragmatic view of how the business yeah. works. But as far as my artistic life is concerned, I look at it, I really bear down on songwriting as a craft. Yeah. You know, and a whole lot of cultural questions feed into that. And the, the more tuned I'm into that I am, I think as I've gotten older, I've become more aware of the, well, certainly the 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 groundswell of politics that, sit in behind our, my, my cultural experience. I mean, mm-hmm. It's undeniable. And I'm, I'm, it's, I have a sort of a, a – my relationship with those questions varies from one song to the next, but it's always there uh, underlying. You know, the, my idea of perspective and what, how the world works – is yeah. always a it's a conversation I'm always having, do you, do as you, you well know, because I'm constantly going on about it. Always. <laughs> do you ever sort of find yourself, you know, in the context of maybe writing an album, and you've got a really clear direction or sort of something that's influenced you that might be coming from like the zeitgeist around you, or you know, politically or whatever? Mm. Do you ever feel like there's been instances in which you've had to curb it to be more commercially appealing? Maybe not like at this stage in your career, but early in your career or anything like that. Oh, I, I, there's definitely been times when, but th- th- those, that's a good, that's a good question. I mean, it, there's, there's, there are times when I've had conversations with other writers or musicians that I'm working with in a room at some point who've said, look, if you, you can be too strident, right. you can definitely overstate the case if you're trying to make a point, a political point. Like it's preachy you know, soapbox kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Mm. And you just get, you know, you start, and you can hear songs, there are songs like that and the, totally. people just tune out. I mean, it's it's just not, sometimes it's just not great poetry, you know. Yeah. Dear but Mr. I, President. I, mean, I was just about to say <laughs> Dear, Mr. Dear Mr. President. Dear Mr. President by Pink. A bit too on the nose oh, maybe. Dear yeah, Mr. yeah. President. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it's you. It's a good song. But then again, <laughs> yeah, I mean. It's not. <laughs> oh my God, I love that. Okay, we're not going to get into that. Yeah, no, it's pretty naff. I have to agree. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, from a songwriting uh, perspective, from like a. Come take a walk with me. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Okay. Um, it was a big hit, though. The cream rises to the top, as you said. So. Well, okay. Look, I, I, I'll tell you one, and I, I need to be careful how I put this, but yeah. um, there's a song on the new album called Slow Dawn, and my sense of my relationship with my country has shifted over the last few years, and it's, mm. got, it's directly connected with the way I travel across the land because I, I, I'm immersed in that that experience and have been for decades of just getting in cars and driving from one place to another to go to, to these different towns to play music and and then and then just walking around towns and up and down roads and going in and out of mm. houses and you just gradually get a sense of how deeply connected you are to your the physical world around mm. you yeah but you know definitely our as, as a third generation or fourth generation white Australian, my perception of Indigenous culture has shifted. 
an indigenous right. relationship with the country I'm living in has gradually shifted. How do, how has that come about? Well, the conversation publicly has just risen, gradually come up. Mm. And yeah. my sense of my relationship with the land has also changed. And it's not, it's been no epiphanies. There's nothing that's happened overnight, yeah. but, but I could, that song slowed on. I could not have written that 10 years ago. Yeah. It just wouldn't have, wouldn't have come into my head. The idea of walking along the, the, uh, the dry torrent, the bank, the dry, uh, Todd river and, Alice Springs mm. and just feeling something, you know. Mm. And I, I wrote it, got back to the motel and I just wrote some words down and hmm, there was something happened to me that just a few minutes ago, you know, and um, that couldn't have – so, you know, obviously my imagination's at work but I couldn't have yeah. done that 10 years ago. I just And that's directly yeah. connected to um, cultural dialogue. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, I find that fascinating. Mm. Mm. Um, <laughs> so does it concern you that – Paul Kelly is on the Year 11 English syllabus and you're not? Uh, I was waiting for you. <laughs> no. <not laughs> no, it's a... It's a <laughs> no comment. <laughs> oh, jeez, I don't know how to comment on that. I really don't. Uh, he, and Paul what Kelly. Song? Oh, oh several it? songs. We studied oh. Paul Kelly's lyrics as poetry. I, uh, I was uh, personally angry that Mark Seymour wasn't included really? in this, but she wrote a letter. To I wrote a letter to, to, to. I did not. <laughs> if, you're not if you're not watching, the Dad, English, just look, the, look the, the English context. coordinator at college. Um, <laughs> yes, um, an open letter. That's a good to get. Look, I'll, I'll give. I tip my hat to Paul. That's a really good get. You know, yeah, absolutely. Oh, oh man, we love it's like, this is Matt, a pro Paul Kelly podcast. You bang mean? on, you know, you got to get him in and talk about. It. <laughs> You're so well if respected. You can, they're studying you. Uh, like that's legit. pretty cool. If you can, yeah. if you can make that connection, we'd love to interview Paul Kelly. Thanks. Oh, <laughs> hang on, Wait, I'll just can I wave my own flag? Yeah. <laughs> I um I went to okay, so I wrote all these songs for a play called Lamb. I'm just letting you know that there's this, <laughs> there's this play him. going around regional Victoria called Lamb, and it's about this um, farming family in a sort of a remote town somewhere in Victoria and their mother dies. So it's a beautiful story. I didn't write the story. I just wrote the songs for it, right? Anyway, so it was on just down the road here at, at the Parkdale Theatre and uh, a whole lot of students turned up. I think they were year 12 students. And oh, so, cool. And oh, then, you to know, study it. It could have mm. meant something, you know, like that yeah. year 12 kids were actually, you know. Did you ask? Maybe you can have no, a No, I, did, I actually ran away. <laughs> You're like, hey, I, I actually wrote the songs. <laughs> 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 yeah, and I sat like quietly in the TikTok back. Or you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, anyway. well, that was a thing when we, when I remember, I think in drama, in Year 12 drama, you go out and you see local plays and you have to analyze oh, them. Oh, okay. Mm. So they could be studying Lamb. Yeah, right. There you cool. go. Oh, maybe. Like that. Cool. You like do that. Have, maybe you do have but, some, um, some, cult, some cultural sway in the, maybe. the year 12, year 11 and 12 syllabus. I'll, I'll die. I'll die. Um, what, what am I about to say here? <laughs> <laughs> You'll die before die you well. see it. I'm knowing that I'm a, a small, that's a small win for me. Yeah, yeah. No, that's okay. a great win. Um, I guess another interesting uh, in terms of cultural context and, and in, in music, yeah. um, in recent years, musicians such as Taylor Swift and Kanye West, I don't know if you've heard of them, um, have come out <laughs> publicly. <laughs> best friends. Oh, my yeah. God, true. Well, as I don't know if you've heard, Dad, that I ref- I've often referred to you as Australia's Kanye West. Um, so they've come out publicly. <laughs> In, like why? In favour of musicians owning the rights to their masters. Um, so obviously that's a huge conversation. But what are your kind of – particularly Taylor Swift has championed this for a long time about that artists should own the rights to their masters. What are your kind of thoughts around that, around musicians? Well, I don't, I don't really know what that statement means because right. are you talking about some kind of law being passed through Congress – <laughs> that says artists must own the rights to them. How does that I, even work? I, think I mean, it's, it's setting a, like a precedent yeah. for contracts, especially those big three hundred and sixty oh. deals in the states that they have, where they own like your touring, your merch, yeah. your everything. Setting a precedent for contracting that, uh, especially for young artists, that sees them own more of their music, so they don't get sort of like, for lack of a better word, fucked out of like yeah. their yeah, yeah, own yeah, yeah, artists. Because yeah. often with young artists, that's sort of what happens if they yeah. don't have much money, they get. Everything basically gets taken away from them because they get yep. m- money straight. I mean, you know this, but yeah, that's yeah, sort of yeah, the yeah. Well, I, I, it's a, I think it's a, um, it's a huge commercial advantage if you end up owning your masters. Right. No mm-hmm. question about it. If you can buy, do you own your masters? Uh, Hunters and collectors does. Really? Wow, yeah. that's cool. Didn't and, even know but that. But they, they ended up buying, uh, 
they, they negotiated the deal. I use the word they because I see the band as it's kind of like Deloitte's. Um, <laughs> it's a separate it's thing. A it's just this firm. firm. <laughs> it's this the huge firm. firm. The it's the firm. They say. Yeah. Um, it, but it negotiated a, a deal with um, the recording, which was Mushroom Records, well after the band. The, 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 you know, the band had made many records yeah. by then. And, wow. and then um, negotiated the deal, and the record company was quite happy to. I mean, I don't. I'm not privy to the actual um, why the terms were so attractive to the record mm. company to allow that to happen, but but did. Interesting. So, um, good management, really. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that. Shout out to Michael Roberts. Um. But see, if we, if you know, periodically, I mean, if I there are there is always a component of every record I make now mm. that I own. I always have. Mm, yeah, right. I put up. I stump up money to pay okay. for oh, my right. recordings. But see, the thing you've got to realise now is that recording's much cheaper than it used to be. See, oh, part right. of that, and, and those That's particular artists, are, like I mean, Crowded House has got an interesting story, or it might be a bit of a tangent. But I mean, those particular artists, the trap is that if you become more, the, the more successful you become, there's more of a sort of a collective momentum to spend more money on your recordings yeah. because it's sort uh-huh. of you're upscaling your values and your yeah. production values and to reach a bigger audience and there, there's all sorts of questions that start to pop at those sorts of times in your career and it's a really useful thing to be able to stand back from and going, actually, do I need to spend all this money? I mean, mm. and now it's actually, I mean, just if you look at the technology we've got around us now, it is actually, you're actually able to make records very cheaply now. Right. Um you know, it's a it's a really complex industry, and yeah, uh, it's not so much. I I tend to regard, I don't see record companies or publishers as necessarily demonic, dark forces yeah, that right. are out to screw artists, mm. which is kind of part of the mythology of music. You know, totally. Yeah. I I just think you have to kind of be smart about you know where you are in your career and you know what are you. T- what are your goals and what are you trying to achieve? And I mean, it's all very dry, really. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm always just looking towards yeah. the next record. And then I, yeah. before I enter into that process, I always there's always a conversation I have with someone about what are we trying to achieve and how much money do we want to spend? And you know, right. Sort of sounds like you have a more like a less sort of stringent, stringent or strident approach um, attitude towards artists owning their masters. It's more about a negotiation or a kind of. Well, you, I yeah, mean, I, yeah. I, the question, that's what I meant before with the question of how do you make that compulsory? I mean, it's, mm, yeah. it's just, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, a market driven industry. Right. So, you know, you, you come up with a piece of material mm. that you, 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 you flog around a demo to particular people who've already got power. Mm. Yeah. And you want to get them to spend money on you in order to promote that material. So there's already a process of negotiation right at the very beginning of the story, you know. And if you look at someone like Taylor Swift, she's always had a parallel narrative about her work, which is about developing her professional identity Mm -hmm. separate from how her fans see her. Right. And artists kind of need to get that right. If they really want to actually get ahead, they have to be able to see how they come across separate to – the act of getting on stage and mm. playing songs, mm-hmm. you know, and that's not easy to do. Yeah, you know, if you're an art, if you're artistically engaged, it's pretty hard to step away from it and kind of see yourself. Okay, well, what am I really worth? You know, yeah, I mean, as a brand, you know, yeah. as a firm, like you were saying, correct. Yeah, you know, it's like a business, it, really. Yeah. yeah, I um, I think just going on that point, and I guess this is kind of getting into a line of questioning just around how the music industry has changed a bit with coronavirus and everything. But do you see? Because as you said, recording styles have changed. It's cheaper to record. You can do it like what we're doing. Like you can record really in your mm. bedroom now and it's not, you know, that much different to recording in a professional studio or whatever. Do you think like in your view that this is a positive or a net positive thing for the industry or do you think there were some sort of things about the older style of recording that were better for the, for music? Oh, there's so many... There's so many questions around that. We did this thing about this little act about – hang on. I've just got to get my thoughts lined up. No, it's Which is, was really educational. Like about a year ago, um, I got together with the manager, Michael, and we decided – oh, we got contacted by the record company 
who said, we're renting this space in South Port, Melbourne, to keep all of the hardware of all the catalogue and everything that was ever recorded of Hunters and Collectors in a cool storage room that was yeah. costing 300 bucks a week, right? And it's this place in Port Melbourne called the Iron Mountain, and it's full of all of this stuff, wow. you know, that's decades old, you know, like, I've, and it's hardware, it's technology that's on two-inch reel-to-reel, like incredibly expensive mm. metals, that are just yeah. consuming space. Yeah. And why are they why are they keeping it? Well, it gets used, the material is used to re- record the the work. The, you know, and then it's got to be put into storage. And all right. the rec all the CDs and the mm. vinyl and everything else is all pressed from this stuff. Yeah. But it's right, all sitting right. in on this and a lot of yeah. it's really toxic. Yeah, right. You know, so we did, had to go it's down there. It yeah. took, took us about a week. Catalog it a work it had all been it was all alphabetically stored away and we had to kind of go through it and go right okay how much of this stuff have we got already on digital how how much has been transferred and we went through it all and you know there's a guy from the record company there as well and okay we can throw that out and eventually we threw out 90 percent of it and i remember being at the port melbourne tip just (laughs) chucking two inch reel to reels into this bin of just People hunters and collectors are going to be going through and, to Port Melbourne tip now <laughs> trying to find like old hunters and staggering collectors. Staggering the like, amount yeah. of stuff. It was wow. like just, you know, it's a truck full of stuff. Now, That's crazy. in the modern era, you just wouldn't have any of that. that wouldn't, no. It's all digital, I've, right? Like, totally. Yeah. Yeah. It's completely changed like, well, I mean the affordability, right? Because storing that stuff, recording onto those Even old storing thing, it. It's, uh, it's all yeah. money that doesn't exist now because you can just have a laptop. And like I wonder if yeah. you've found – that that's maybe inspired like a new generation of artists that you personally might find, I don't know, inspiring is a word, but you're like quite, are you impressed by how resourceful younger artists have become? Yeah. 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 There's a, there's a, there's an act. It's entrepreneurialism. I mean, I've always really admired the idea. I mean, early days of Hunters, there were guys in that band who had a really entrepreneurial approach to music. I mean, mm-hmm. in its it, at the very beginning of the band's career, that was its greatest strength. That there were, we had this entrepreneurial. I mean, it it did actually wane with time, but but that idea of just being a, like a pop up and just yeah. going, we're going to try this out and see if it works, is a really great thing to do. Yeah, but it's not the other thing about digital recording as well, which people you might some engineers might talk about, is that when you actually record music now, it doesn't have to be. Tracks don't need to be located anywhere in particular. They're just in a box. They're floating around in a digital. Yeah, right. So the way you actually mix and produce music now is there's kind of no limit to it anymore. Whereas yeah. with tape, although what's ended up happening now with vinyl, because now there's this shift back to vinyl, people want to hear things like like they want the Beatles drum sound. You know, they want to hear that sound. Right. So there's yeah. kind of this weird now reversion back to um, production values that you c- that you could never record that way again now because the technology doesn't exist anymore. So mm, it's no. kind of everything's just going round and round, you know. Um, Sorry, I'm boring. Do you think you're a good singer? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Why are you apologising? <laughs> cool. Yeah. Cool. You yeah. think you think um, you're pretty good, don't you? Do, uh, yeah, that's that a line, clear line. Said, do you? On the line, that line of thought, which of your two daughters is more talented? <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'd say Eva to be safe. If you're I was better at some things than she is, and and, t- and vice versa. It's a very uh, diplomatic response. Yeah. Uh, no, but in all Eva in, writes songs. Oh, oh. shots <laughs> fired! Um, Eva will be listening to this, so she will. Shout out. Um, so she would be annoyed that she's not here, even though there'd be no reason yeah, for her to be here. I can but, see um, that. <laughs> okay, so back Am to I going to get the, uh, the the phone call of remorse tomorrow? Yeah. Yes, you are. Why well, wasn't I asked to be on? <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, no, no will... from you. No. No, Dad, did, should I have said that? No. <laughs> I am all too familiar with that there phone will call. Be, oh, be, Sarah, both did, of you yeah. are getting a remorseful phone call. What, what did I mean? What did I mean? Yeah, so. <laughs> okay, so we recently reviewed Billie Eilish's documentary, which uh, chronicled her oh, yeah. rapid rise to fame from the age of 15 to 18. Um, so what, just generally, what do you think of musicians making docos about, you know, their music and their life? And would you ever make one? I've just done it, actually. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't well, know we that. haven't released oh, it yet. Scoop. 
Um, quite the Daily Mail. Yeah. <laughs> it's not quite. It's not quite like a Billie Eilish. No, style no, it's not that kind of thing. But um, it's There's definitely. There's no filming. I mean, I'm not in it. So yeah, I guess where it's were not the, that where's the film crew? Because in like in these artist documentaries, often it's like the family life. You know, like oh, you okay. get a look at them having real arguments. It's sort of vulnerability. And in Katy Perry's one, there's a thing of her crying about her divorce. No, from... no, it's not like that at all. It's actually yeah. about music. You have more, <laughs> more self-respect Mine, maybe. Mine's I think actually that, that about answered music. the question. It did. Um, oh, I, I think that that's it's great. I just think it's a great idea. Really good. Especially if you're young. Right. I mean, the idea of demystifying... In a public mind, um, just the, the the bells and whistles that att- attach mm. to fame, and especially if you're young, it's really good, good idea, I reckon. I mean, in our our generation, to use that word, um, a lot of the rhetoric around music was always written after the fact. So in the in the old days. Yeah. You know, the bands would become enormously successful, and there'd be all this mystique that would. I mean, the Stones were actually really good in this respect because they made they it's they a band for those Rolling Stones know. if you've never heard of them <laughs> of the of my generation, right? But they actually did actually go and expose a lot of stuff about their own lifestyle, which I thought was a really useful exercise, mm. you know. Um, but the idea of doing it all sort of after the fact is sort of like well after the fact, right? I'm not sure how much value that has, but if you're making mm. a documentary that is really closely connected with work that you're doing right now or yeah. very soon after. I reckon that's actually, if, if you're smart about it, I reckon it's a really useful thing to do. Do you um, have any sort of young artists that you see coming up, I mean, internationally or Australian, uh, that you think are doing something right or something interesting that you have, um, yeah, been following? Uh, look, I I really love Laura Marling. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know who that is. She's okay, so <laughs> she's she's been around for a while though. Like she's an English. No, well, there's no one really she's, current that I would be able to no, comment on. No, Billy Eilish's. No, um, Olivia no, Rodrigo. Not right now. I no. do want to ask you. Did you Google? Debate. That's not did because I don't ha- don't rate anybody. <laughs> it's just baby? that I'm no. not aware of them. Bad you know, so. baby. Did you Google Olivia Rodrigo driver's license no. lyrics? No. <laughs> I needed to print something off from your computer and I, I saw, you know, when you Google something in the, oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, it comes yeah. up, yeah. but I wasn't sure if it was like, cause I, I Googled drive cause I was trying to find Google drive. I wasn't sure if it was showing me your search history, good, Olivia Rodrigo driver's <laughs> license lyrics, but it wasn't, it was, um, I think it was just predicting. No, I definitely didn't do that. For context, <laughs> that's like this big Disney stars new song. It okay. would have been really yeah. funny if you had been Googling it. <laughs> I mean, no, you would have found like Robbie's fishing. How to Talk catch a yellow belly in the Murray <laughs> River. What? Oh, you trying to figure out how to how do to, a fishing. Yeah, yeah. That's, That's not that a very sad. Or, or, uh, what's the other on one brand. I went to um, is um, uh, stealth camping. Have you heard of stealth camping? No. <laughs> what's that? Um, oh, it's a, a, we well, camp I stumble on this phenomenon in the United States now in the Canada where homelessness is so rampant. It's such. It's become a way of life. And there are all these advisories on YouTube, these guys telling you how to how pitch to your it. tent wow. in places where the police aren't going to see you. And it's, wow. it's fantastic YouTube. So are These you guys lurking great, around. Are, yeah, are you watching that for your own, just for your own, in case you ever need to? <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's there's there's the music thing. It doesn't camping. do well. Yeah, yeah they had a little torch, you know. <laughs> Anyway, go on. Um, do, uh, sorry, just to further that, if there's no just sort of like specific like... artists, I guess, that you've like honed in on, are there like genres or like elements of, you know, pop music or something or rock or rap or whatever that you've found to be like an interesting direction in music or, um, or a not interesting direction, like if you don't like it? Oh, the elements of I, – I, I don't really have any value judgment on any music right. really other than – That's a lie. No, it's true. There, I have no very much. I've sent you music. I, 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 the only thing is, I don't really like Lady in Red. Uh, there no are certain songs I, well, you wouldn't even know who that was. <laughs> yeah. Barry Manilow. Oh. You know, but that, there not, are certain that's not current or, or, music. Michael, is it? No, that's <laughs> correct. <laughs> so, um, we're hamstrung in some respects. Music. I send you music all the time and you never respond to me. That's so, not true. Okay, it's true. I do no, respond, it's... not all the time, but often the response is. You He's always busy. send me Taylor Swift, though. It's just no, always. Taylor always Swift. I send it. Sometimes I send you Heim. Sometimes I send you Charlie XCX. Um, well, it's cool. Whatever. No, you know what? Okay. It. Well, just to answer your question. No. Um, <laughs> I I do um, tend to be. I think I'm pretty reasonable at being able to gauge whether or not someone, a singer, is being truthful. Yeah, that's interesting. That is interesting, and and I think. 
generally speaking, people are. And I think punters, that's consumers, it's mm. old, old, old school language, um, are generally pretty well equipped to be able to tell whether a, an artist is 100%. full of bullshit or not. And, they are, and as I said before, when we were talking about exposure and how it all works, the cream, I generally think, rises to the top. And I've just yeah. re- arrived at that point in my dotage. Mm. Um, just through listening to a lot of music over the years and just watching how artists rise and fall and some linger mm. around <laughs> and others don't, you know. And I think the only way, you get flushed out, really, mm. with time. Do you think, I mean, along that, that line of thought, like the cream rises to the top, because I think a lot of musicians who, or just people who are big, re- really into music, often you'll hear people criticising pop music today or, oh, yeah, or yeah, 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 that yeah. sort of line of thinking or thinking pop's shit because, mm. it's, because it's mass produced Well, if you gratuitously – I'm very aware of the gratuitous dismissal, you know, amongst uh-huh. my own peer group, you know. And, you know, you, you sit around, you know, as, again, you know, I'm an older guy, but in, in rooms with other old guys – who go, right. oh, yeah, she's this or he's uh-huh. that yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And you go, well, you really ought to have a good sit, – sit down, have a Bex and a cup of tea <laughs> and have a think about why you're just b- dissing that person. Right. Mm. You know, I mean, they've got their – they've arrived at a point of making music like that for all sorts of reasons. You know, they've got a – there's a life behind that sound. Yeah. yeah. And I just generally have the view credit where credit's due, you know. Like, yeah. I mean, I may not – like, it's like, you know, you asking me to – respond to taylor swift right i mean it's <laughs> i i can you know get my ducks lined up and go well taylor swift's experience isn't something and i'm necessarily going to relate to really as much as you would <laughs> Sorry. but i can go i can sit down and i can absorb the the emotional you know i can hear she's singing about something she cares about she's a really good song i can make all those mm. didact you know didactic evaluations and go yeah she's pretty good do you think and clearly millions of people agree with yeah. me mm, mm. you know i mean i think yeah like what you're saying what you said about authenticity, I think, is interesting, and yeah. the, the area exactly. of like, do you think you know, even if you don't think something's good, do you think there's sort of, a, do you think that authenticity, or at least, if you can tell that someone's actually being honest, do you think that's what really kind? Of, would you say that's what makes something val- good? Or yeah, it's has a real, value? it's a tricky little thing, and you sort of go, oh, I like the way she put that, right? Mm. You know, I like the way she's this in the way she's expressing that idea that. I can. She's really thought about that. That's actually got a lot of emotional depth, and and it's it might just be a line. Yeah. Mm. You know. At, yeah. But I'm always very wary of of just hearing something and, and then instantly reacting. You know, mm-hmm. I'm very wary mm. of that because I've got a particular pedigree. You know, I've come from a particular cultural environment, and which I I, I can give you a chapter and very clearly recall the, my very first exposure to music I, I remember what it felt mm. like and 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 then how it evolved and changed over the years and what it was like being an adolescent in the 1970s you know and it's a very i have a very clear idea of that and it's vastly different to yours yeah mm. you know yeah so okay that being the case there's music that's just rising to the surface now that has nothing to do with me mm. you know yeah i think and, Sorry to interrupt you. I think there's a, there's a thing that I often think about and we've spoken about before um, in songwriting or music production in, in particular and it's touching on this like authenticity thing of oh, yeah. relatability kind of almost being this thing that people so – they want to be relatable, relatable, but it becomes like the enemy of truth in a way because oh, yeah, they're like right. funneling yeah. themselves into this relatable sort of cone or something yeah. and, then it, and, in, and in turn – not being truthful. Well, it's interesting, this whole idea of what truth is. You know, right. it, it can it be a thing, a phenomenon of meaning that is sitting now we're really getting philosophical, yeah. that sits in the middle of the room. It's not necessary. Yeah. And uh, you might go to it as an artist and go, okay, now am I, I'm, I'm sensing something going down here and I do this. You know, mm. and how do I embrace that idea, uh, start singing a line and then go, what am I saying here that other people are going to get? And is it going to, am I going to find that middle ground? Yeah. Mm. And that, to, to me, songwriting, that is actually the golden nugget of songwriting. Yeah. That's what you're trying to do. Your f- common yeah. ground is the, is the key. Um, and that's where meaning is. It's not right. necessarily because Mark Seymour, pay, you know, got lost in an Uber <laughs> somewhere in West Melbourne. And yeah. He told a so- wrote a song about it because there Did might you? be all these other people out there who got lost in Ubers, mm. you know, it's. Did you write a song about that? No. Oh. <laughs> I was like, but it's coming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but the idea, the idea of relatability um, as, yeah. as a thing in itself is 
Yeah, I, I, I agree. <laughs> how long's a piece of string? Is right, right, exactly. I, I agree with you. I think, and that's a good point as well. Like, there's definitely music that I listen to that, like, sometimes I don't know what they're talking about, or I'm like, this is about divorce, or you know, it's about yeah. something that I've never experienced, but it's still. Like you said, if you can have this sort of level of emotional um, reaction mm. to the music, that can still Makes make you it want worthy. to listen to it. Makes yeah. it worthy. Yeah. It has value or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, fuck, marry, kill. Oh, my James God. Rain, Paul Kelly or Peter Garrett? Oh, this is so Triple M. <laughs> <laughs> that's, they wouldn't say fuck though. But that's a real radio. Yes, that's a, that's a real device. And then you're going to get oh, the artist is on the back foot now. Uh, what was it again? Fuck, marry, or kill. You seem to yeah. think that I'm not your daughter and that I'm an actual interviewer. Well, right? well uh, hey, we've got to get that sorted. I think we've been doing a good job so far. We seem convincing that this might be a professional um, enterprise. Until now. Yeah. <laughs> until now. Until fuck, so marry, kill. Who's the list? Paul Kelly. <laughs> James Rang. Yeah. Paul Kelly, Peter Garrett. They're all vastly different. The only well, thing they have in common is that they're white middle class men. And same caliber of rock music icon vibes as you. Oh, I think they've all achieved an enormous amount. <laughs> I have a I actually yeah, have a personal fuck? friendship. Who would you kill? I, no. <laughs> <laughs> None of the above. <laughs> so well, so you just leave them all out in the dirt. What if they're they, all all killed. They're all killed. Sorry, Pete, I, I'm a big fan of yours. Um all right. Um, oh, I just I um <laughs> wanted to ask a question about with COVID and not probably not being able to tour at least in a traditional capacity. Is there are there any uh, venues or cities or anything like that that you really miss playing at? Oh, it's a good question. Uh, oh yeah. I mean, there are some. He's getting flashbacks to the seventies. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, there, there are just the good there old are, days. <laughs> yeah. Um, there are some states I don't really like. Can you name them? Will you name them? This big one up top. <laughs> Worst north. gig you've yeah. ever played. I don't, like crossing, your vibe. I don't like crossing the border. <laughs> um, <laughs> Somewhere in far north. Oh, that's yeah. not. That's not something I don't really need to go into too deeply. I might alienate some people, but um, <laughs> I quite. I miss Western Australia. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I love going over there. Astor Theatre. It's so quiet and clean. I mean, that's showing my age, but it's an incredibly mm. beautiful state. And I've travelled around there a lot. Yeah. Um, and it's really different than the rest mm. of Australia. It's very, very different. Um, it's very remote. Yeah. So it's worth. It's definitely worth visiting if you can get over there. Yeah. Well, I don't think we're ever going to be allowed over there again. The no. borders are slammed That's shut. Slammed shut. Yeah. They're becoming a different country, they I are. assume. I mean, they've always wanted to be. So. Yeah, that's true. I mean, well, hopefully you'll be able to play. That's not too, like, it's not like you're saying New York. You know, like you could easily probably play a gig in Perth sometime yeah. soon. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Just reminding yeah, you. I think there's one book, the November the 7th. Oh, oh yeah, you got oh, a well, plug. There, there go. we go. Uh, um, is it The Undertow or just Mark's name? It's uh, The Undertow. Yeah. Nice. Uh, how much longer do we have, Sarah? Um, I mean, we've got a song. We've been going for about 40 minutes. Okay, cool. Just under. Um, I had a question for you and I don't want you to like think I'm being mean. <laughs> But what has it been? No, this is a real <laughs> question. Do you think I'm what being is it? Mean? No, because I don't want you know bullying our guests. I do, I'm bullying dad. I mean, he's my dad. We have to remember that. Yeah. I wanted to ask you what it's been like growing older in the Australian music industry, and how have things changed for you when youth is kind of no longer part of the <laughs> equation? Um, and I mean, just, this is a serious question because you. no, it's a because good question. you know there are artists. Sarah and I were speaking about this the other mm. day. Katy Perry, who's not—I mean, she's in her thirties, but mm. she did an interview um, talking about uh, how f- falling out of relevance or whatever. Now, I mean, she yeah. had a pretty steep decline of she was general very fame. famous and yeah. then very sort of not famous. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, yeah. But I wondered whether you could talk to that how what it's like growing older in an, in a music industry that. In an industry that really values youth as a kind of commodity or whatever. Mm. Well, I think the first thing in it you have to consider is um, whether you want to keep going or not. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and people, you can re, you can sort of. I mean, you know, we we're talking before about I think coming to grips with what you do actually control as an artist. You know, in in, a, in the whole spectrum of activity that you you're engaged in, and getting up on stage with playing guitar, singing songs. Um, you know, writing them, uh, traveling, getting on and off planes, um, getting worksheets. I mean, it's, there's all these decisions you're making all the time and all of them have got to feed into the act of creating new work. Mm. But, but if, you, if you don't particularly want to create new work anymore, at some point, mm. 
I mean, I wouldn't necessarily want to comment on Kate Perry because she had an enormous amount of... Kate, 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 Kate Perry. Katie, His whatever. friend, he calls her Kate. Kate. <laughs> Close friend, um, Kate Perry. <laughs> it's funny that I say things really in, in, inadvertently funny it's like, with you guys. It's the best kind of funny. <laughs> um, but... Uh. I mean, that, everyone's got different worry. circumstances and, you know, we could actually talk about gender. I mean, women have mm. a right. different – uh, there are different expectations of women. No no question about it, mm. you know. And, and it, well, yeah, Mick Jagger one, like, right. the, yeah. And, and they have to grapple with that, and unfortunately. And, but, and, and there are advantages for men that they can be – become sort of invi- sexually invisible. Yeah. And as they get older, because the public's expectations are different. I mean, so, I mean, I'm freely and willing to acknowledge that um, that I I do have an advantage in that respect. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I still had to make the decision at some point, do I want to keep doing this? And I thought, well, I I really like writing songs. Right. But they've got to be about things that I can be truthful about. Mm -hmm. And my, my... my experience has radically changed since I was yeah. a young man. You know, like I'm married and had two daughters and, you know, we've got a home in the suburbs and I, I have a very quiet life, mm. relatively speaking. Um, so what am I writing about now that's interesting? Mm, yeah. So I've got to look for material that, that people are going to go, oh, okay, well, he's saying something that I can relate to or mm. use that term. Yeah. Whereas uh, man, Katy Perry's situation is vastly different to that. It's yeah. True. I mean, a bit more broadly in terms of like, it's a shitty word, but like relevance or whatever. Was there, did you experience any kind of like. Massively. Really? Oh, title come down. Oh, really? Yeah. Absolutely. Post hunters and collectors. It was right. basically right. ground zero. Okay. Who am I? Yeah. Wow. That, yeah. I, I've I didn't even realize that, it was yeah. happening at the time. Like I went through yeah. a period of about three or four years mm-hmm. and I didn't actually recognize it for what it was, but I was, I had no, people just didn't know who I was. Yeah. Mm. You know, looking back on it now, I mean, it's 25 years ago, but really that's what actually happened. And I had to go, okay, somehow I'm starting again. Yeah. Right, right. I didn't even know that. I know. It's go. like, you Good know, interview. I kept You've... telling you. And <laughs> oh, I kept true telling to the you. Notes. Do you want to hear my story? <laughs> yeah, no. I mean. <laughs> Hannah. No, Dad, shut up. No, I mean, I have like found, there is a music <laughs> video of you, your first music video that you did um, after Hunters and Collectors. And you're wearing this like Elvis suit. I know. I've asked him about this. I'll uh, I'll it's... link it in the show notes. <laughs> and you're doing this kind of Elvis thing. It's in the 90s, I think. It was um, Ghost of Van Glory. That's it's actually it. not a Great half. song. It's a half decent the song. Ghost, yeah. Ghost of Van Glory. In case anyone wanted me to do it. <laughs> yeah, in case anybody wanted you to sing it rather than the man who <laughs> sings it. <laughs> he doesn't sing it anymore. You won't get Ghost oh. of Van Glory um, in a live show, will you? Oh, yeah. Are there, are there any songs you won't, reaching. you just won't perform live yeah. or that you don't yeah. like performing live, but you have to? <laughs> One in uh, particular, probably. You're pretty good about playing yeah. all your classics. You always do. Yeah, but the thing about those hunters, look, the, mm. the thing about hunters is it's famous for probably half a dozen songs. Yeah. And that's actually not bad. That it's a good, good strike rate. Yeah, it yeah. is. But they're, but they're all balladic, you constructed yeah. songs you can play on acoustic guitar because. Hello, that's actually how they were written. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Hello. Yeah, I know. Well, there's people who don't really, it was kind of me. You know? um, <laughs> don't, not to put too fine a point on it. Um, but, but, but I can't oh, play. Sorry. There's some stuff yeah. that Hunters did that I just can't play because it was very Hunters and Collectors, you know. Right. And, you know. Right. And it does sound different now. Like often when you perform um, your older songs, it does have a more kind of, yeah, um, acoustic sound, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Ho- Holly, what do you do with Holly Grail at the start of the show? It's like, oh, the, uh, oh, oh, no, how oh, yeah. we, oh go. we forgot. We should I forgot. get you to do a live intro for us for the episode. Oh, really yeah, yeah. I, I actually whoa, didn't so mention whatever. my intro. Oh, how I think. were we to know? <laughs> You the astral and then the engineer astral astral mix. Yeah, he, yeah. This is so how <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> yeah, that's it. it. We'll do the guitars. And yeah. we left it all on there. Um, for those, I obviously, that. I forgot to mention this in the intro, but. I think you might have guessed by now <laughs> yeah. that um, Dad's song is our intro song. Um, Which gets flagged on YouTube for copyright. Yeah, <laughs> I think it might upload. I think and I'm might... like, we know him. Like... <laughs> is that right? Yeah, it does. You get... Yeah, you're actually quite successful, Dad. Yeah. On... <laughs> in case com- you didn't know. Uh, in case you didn't know, APRA's <laughs> coming for us. So, yeah. yeah. It's fine. Um, We'll sort it out later. We'll sort it out later. I do have some um, more questions. Uh, well, there's seven other guys who all got a stake in that. You know that, don't you? I do. I do know that. 
You can talk to them for Apart us. from me. No, no, I just I've got to count. They'll, <laughs> They'll be the, with the yeah. firm. <laughs> the um, firm. Yeah. I have another question. Um, this is a listener contribution. Uh, some people say the best day of their life was when they had a kid or when they got married. You've consistently said to me that the best day of your life, rather than when I was born or when my sister was born or when you were married or whatever, was that when you got your high school GSC scores. What? HSC. H- what's GSC? Oh, that's English. That's Sorry, <laughs> HSC. G- um, H- HSC. That's yeah. what we used to have. Yeah, you said the best day of your I life. I can empathise with I that. I know, yeah. you can. <laughs> this is uh, why. Oh, that was really good. <laughs> yeah, high five, Mark. I'm with you. Isn't that I incredible? Agree. A man has a whole, you know, incredibly successful music career, a family, a beautiful yeah. wife. One and his, Aria. One, one yeah. Aria was the best day of his life is still when you got your uh, your HSC scores. That's pretty... Hard work pays off. On a lame, you're saying it's lame? No, I'm just... <laughs> I'm I'm wondering why. It's it's really incredible. That must have been an amazing day for you. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> Remembers it very well. I, just, I just had this. It was the end of year twelve, and I, I, I just didn't enjoy the whole thing. You know, like right. was, I don't. Know, I think you know. I could speak for you know hundreds of thousands of kids who are studying year twelve now. It's like it. It's just this really. I mean, you work your ring off. It's incredibly yeah. hard mm. year twelve, and there's just this massive expectation. It, you imagine people have got and your parents especially. You know that you want to win. You know. Yeah. And and then you get the you get the number like and I remember opening the envelope. I mean, in those days we had paper, you know. Yeah. It's an envelope, and walking around in the back. And we, you know, what's paper? Just, <laughs> the suburban backyard yeah. in Doncaster, you know. It was just really dry, dull place. You know, I hated the house. I hated where we were living. You know, I was bored out of my mind, and you know, I'd thought my life was had been on hold for twelve months, so that I could do this thing. And I remember studying maths. Like I'm not naturally, I'm actually reasonably numerical, but I actually worked really hard at maths and I got a really good math score and I'm going, I can't believe I did that. You know, like Mark, I'm just this little dummy guy, you know, like not very. Yeah, I are. love that. That's Sorry, actually that's... really, it's a really yeah. relatable story. For yeah, me. Yeah, totally. So really, I mean, in terms me, of my yeah, own you trajectory, I actually think that was a pretty big moment. So I don't know why you're even thinking. That's <laughs> well, where's the irony? And I don't find, isn't it? Where's the irony in that? You know? <laughs> I like it. No, it's no, it's definitely valid. I just I just thought it would be a funny valid. question to ask. I've, um I just <laughs> have one, you one I've heard and seen. Yeah, you're seen by the second estate. Yeah. Nice I've, work. I've one more like um I don't know, sillier question, I suppose. What was it like performing Holy Grail at the AFL grand final? Like uh, is that a big done that deal? a couple times, right? Well, yeah. Is yeah. that like that? I feel like that's a big. That song is a real. Well, it's that and up there, Kazali. They're the two <laughs> AFL songs. Like that's kind of a big deal, especially for a footy oh, fan. Yeah. That's cool. I totally agree. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, whenever so, whenever I'm like, whoa, like that is the footy song, and you're oh, no, totally agree. It in the grand I mean, final. At the time, I just thought, what am I doing this for? I mean, people are. You know, I just. The, the, it's a really good question because, yeah. like, now I go, I look at it. I mean, again, it's probably. A, consequence of being older but i actually mm. looked at that and go that's a huge win yeah. that i actually got there and definitely people believed in me enough that they thought you could attach i mean um, the, the small point that holy grail has nothing to do with that, football i think it's like the best part <laughs> yeah. the whole thing yeah and that's what actually makes it cool yeah it's yeah. just this random thing and like it's got, it, i remember a mate of mine an old music mate of mine nick barker once said yeah, all you have to do is write a song about a cup. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, so you write a song it. about a cup and it ends up being this football right. anthem. So there you go. We're back with Mark Seymour and, uh, and we're going to do a top three, which is a game that we always play at the end of an episode. I don't know if you've ever heard them, Mark. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. how no. it works yep. is that we will give you a topic or a general like th- idea and you have to pick the top three things – out of that topic. It will make sense when I start or when okay. Sarah starts. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I've, I don't know if you've ever heard this game. We like to ask each other potentially questions um, that are a little dicey. So top three artists whose success doesn't make any sense to you. These don't have to be Australian artists, yeah. by the way. You can make them big artists if, if you want. Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> top three. Um, Kanye West. Okay. Um, <laughs> me, uh, me leaves. <laughs> Storms out. Um, yep. 
No, oh, no, I did that deliberately. Yeah. <laughs> but that's because generational as well. I just don't have much familiarity. I just don't get Kanye West. Um, yeah. Who else would I put in that category? Says nothing. Ollie. Enormous success. Um, oh, I, I just think it's really... You don't have to answer. Dangerous. It's very dangerous. And the people that I think, I, I could list you a few people yeah. who would not hear know about this and then I would be in a lot of trouble. I mean, it'd be good it for get back. artists to yeah. know about this. Someone would find out about it. Hmm. Okay. You know, that there are people I, I know who I just don't understand why they're so successful. You know, definitely. <gasps> I want to tea? say one, but I'm scared I'll get tea. you in trouble, yeah. so I'm not going to. Exactly the right. The tea. Yeah. We're spilling the tea, sis. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's what this okay, podcast good. is. Okay, moving on. You're Are you asking? One. No, oh, you're next. Oh, sorry. Top three best songwriters of all time. Oh, it's really boring. My, my, no. I have to say Bob Dylan. Yeah, of course. I thought you would. Um. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> and one point yeah. for Mark. <laughs> I think Taylor Swift's really good. Yeah. I really like Laura. As if you're related. Oh, she's really good. I'm responsible yeah. no for question Taylor Swift's uh, success. I, I don't know about top three. I really like Laura Marling. I'm a huge mm. fan of Laura Marling. My daughter Eva put me onto her. I just think she's fantastic. She is. I mm. agree. Yeah. Um, All right. But that's, that's probably. Yeah, nice. Yeah. This is a, along a similar vein, but we sort of asked you something uh, similar before, but uh, we'll see if you can answer it now. Top three pop artists from the past 10 years. I couldn't even tell you. But like, come on, you know pop artists. Katy Perry. Wait, 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 Taylor Swift. Perry, Hannah. Kate Perry. <laughs> yeah. Taylor Swift. Uh, Justin Bieber. Lady Gaga. You know what I mean? Like, just any. Come on. Rack your fucking brain. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, how do I, uh, who, who do I think? Mm. Yeah, just like who top do you three like? pop artists. Who do you, you know artists. You always say, On the radio. that so-and-so's good. I said you would do a Leaper song the other day. You just. Taylor Swift. Okay. Lady Gaga. She is good. Yeah. I like some of her new songs. I like some of the Gaga songs. That's a Kanye West quote. But what the fuck does she know about cameras? <laughs> anyway, people who've seen it will get it. It's fine. <laughs> I do know that quote. It's good. Are you looking End for third least. one? Yeah. yeah. Top, it's, the na- game is called Top Three. Can I Google? Yeah. Um, phone a friend. <laughs> this game is so challenging <laughs> that you have to phone a friend. Ollie's staring at me. There's a little dog here if you're listening. I have a, a surprise while while you're googling a surprise top three um, that we haven't thought of. Who are the top three most famous people that you could call right now on your phone? Whoa, that's a good one. Let's just skip this one. It's boring. Um, <laughs> say, say it again. Uh, top three most famous people that you could call right now on your phone. Um, or like you don't have to call them, but whose number you have, maybe. Oh, you- yeah. Who could you call? Who's the most famous person you could call in right your now? phone? I've got Peter Garrett in here. Yeah, boring. <laughs> Kylie Minogue. Yeah, like is Kylie in there? Uh, hang on. Even Danny will take Danny. We'll take Danny. <laughs> Danny's pretty good. You don't what have about, to um, call them right now. No, but don't call them, yeah, please. Um, but we just can um, actually. Uh, like who's another? You know, Tones and I. <laughs> Tones and I. Um, Jessica Malboy. Yeah. Guy Sebastian. Delta. I'd have no, neither of those. I'm just quickly scrolling. <laughs> Daryl Braithwaite's in here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's pretty famous. Yeah, there you go. He, even you guys know I've about him. I've met him, actually. Brian Brown, is that? Uh, you no know comment. Brian Brown? He's a very Not famous Australian actor. Oh. Um, Anyone from ACDC? Or... Oh, yeah, what about, um? what's the other one? Elvis Costello. Oh, it's, that's pretty famous. That is pretty that's famous. really famous. Yeah, really famous. there's a story how I got his number. That's pretty interesting. Um, you can tell it if you yeah. want. <laughs> no? Wow. Actually, there's a few in here. Just go to the next question. And I'll... Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know what, the, what okay, is... Okay, the, um... dogs, the dog's on my piece of paper. Oh, uh, it's, do you want me to read it out? No, or do you she's want me got to give it. you the piece of paper? Okay. Oh. All right. John Top. Farnham. <laughs> That's pretty good. There's going to be so much dead air. All yeah. blokes. They're all blokes too. Yeah. It's okay. You're a misogynist though, so it makes <laughs> oh, sense. <laughs> what about like um, any politicians that have tried to be friends with you? Dan- Danny Boy, Daniel Dan Andrews. Andrews. Oh, King. Were you there when he broke his Daniel back? Daniel Andrews? What? No. Really? Got his number. <gasps> no, you don't. You are lying. You wow. do not have Daniel got, Andrews' I've number. I've got an- uh, Al- uh, Albo. 
Oh, cool. You can call... You so are fucking I lying. I had a feeling you, you had... are lying. Yeah. You cannot call Anthony Albanese right now. No, he wouldn't answer. Do you have, his, you number? have his number? Why yeah. do you have oh, Anthony Albanese? I had a feeling though, it makes sense. They're labour politicians. Like they're going to be hunters. They're, they're, they're middle-aged labour politicians. Reliable. Hunters and collectors <laughs> is their shit. They know, like... they, know I'm, they know I'm a Marxist. They know I'm there. I'm reliable. <laughs> I never vary. Like, they, they can so rely are you, on him. hold on, are you suggesting Al- Anthony Albanese is a Marxist? No, he's not. Even, not <laughs> he's by a long shot. Certainly not. Um, anyway, Anthony, you have Steve Anthony. Al- oh, sorry. You have Anthony Albanese's this number. Is terrible. This Do you have any favorite. Greens? Greens politicians? No, Sarah I don't have any Greens. I do know Sarah though. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't First have name though. basis, Sarah. He Sarah. calls her. Yeah, like Kate. Um, him, Ms. Hanson. Kate Perry. And- <laughs> anyway, all right. Was- okay, the last one is um, top three worst dog breeds. Least favourite dog breeds. There's one that you're not allowed to say. Oh, just some of the ones around here. I just don't like, I really like that. I do really just like small yappy dogs, you know, the little ones. <laughs> Except chihuahuas. <laughs> oh, you've got a chihuahua. No, you know, lap dogs. I'm not a big fan of lap dogs. It's oh. not a breed, but that's cool. Um, <laughs> um a little sort of like terrier, little hairy terriers, mm. you know. Look at this. As, as this dog wheels its way around into the mic. Right. <laughs> lap dogs. I hate lap dogs. You've got to edit. As it's in your lap. I know. It's immediately gone into my lap. Mm. Uh, ha, ha, you got to edit all this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. All right, yeah. Do you have any others, like actual breeds or no? Um, Staffies. Yeah, golden no, no. retrievers. Oh, I love golden retrievers. Uh, no, um, you like I, I reckon, I reckon like uh, um, Jack Russells. Oh, yuck. Yes, agree. Yeah, I just dislike Our Jack dog Russells. Has Jack Russell. Um, I know. <laughs> it's the part he doesn't it's a like. <laughs> what about um, like uh, any like poodle mixes? I uh, I'm not a big fan of poodles. Mm-mm. No, I know. You heard it here yeah. first, folks. Um, I'm just going to take that quote, send it to the Daily Mail. Mark Seymour, not a fan of poodles. I'm not a big fan of poodles. All right. Are we done? Yeah, I think we're done. Thank you so much. Thanks, Dad. Uh, I hope that was useful. Oh, it was a fantastic interview. It's great. I'm very happy with this. I think the people will love it. Um, The Little Ponies. Yeah. Little Ponies, uh, you can comment on our Instagram. I love Mark Seymour. Yeah. That can be your comment to yep. show you've listened to the full app. Yeah. Well, um, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you very much. For, I hope you found it interesting. Punters. Punters. Okay. Thanks, Dad. No worries. Bye, everyone. All right. Bye, everyone. Whoa! I'm a fool for the whole.